Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Byers, and this is Andy255. And we are, I, if you watched my introduction to the end particles um, and the classic particles and what the differences are now, I'm going to talk about that. Um, the whole idea about uh, particle systems is that they can do things that other systems can't. Um, and there's a lot more you can do with them than you think. You can do smoke, you can do fire, rain, snow, dust, particles, uh, sparks, and the list goes on and on. But the idea here is that we want to understand how to control them. Anybody can make them, but it takes a, an experienced um, uh, artist that can control and have, the par have these particles do exactly what they want them to do so you can get the effect that you want. Again, we're just going to take you through what the differences are between uh, Maya classic particles and Maya n particles. So they're both uh, they're both awesome. They're both great. Um, the the main difference here is that when we look in the outliner, so go to Windows Outliner, you can see that I've got this up here. Outliner, I use that a lot to be able to, uh, and you can rename things pretty easily by double clicking on them. So you can rename those anything, in, you know, you might want to do that instead of just emitter one and emitter two. So when you create a n particle system, you get uh, these three things you get the uh, emitter, okay, and then the particle, and then you get the nucleus. So, so you get the emitter. I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. Emitter, particle, which you don't see because it's 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 still in the emitter, and then the nucleus. So uh, those are the three things you get for the end particle. And the one that sticks out the most is that they're both the same except for the end particle has n meaning nucleus. So the nucleus is what's driving the particles downward. Okay, it adds. The nucleus also allows it to uh, self collide. Okay, so that's a big one. So n particles are going to be slower. So if you have a scene that you don't need the particles to collide with each other, um, like you're doing a quick dust scene and you have millions of particles, you do not want to use n particles. Okay, it would it would basically crash your system. So, basically, if you think of um, n particles, yeah, they're a lot more advanced, but they're going to slow your system down to a crawl. Now, think about how you're going to use it. So, if you're going to have dust and smoke, and you're going to have a, a, you know millions of polygon or excuse me particles, then you're going to want to use the classic particle system. Okay, and that's that's what we're going to start with. And so, we're going to start with the classic par particle system. And see what your system can do, because if you if you got a laptop, and and you're using these particle systems, and you use the n particle, um, and you're trying to do sparks, uh, and you, you don't need to have them self collide. Okay, you don't need to have self collision when you're doing sparks, um, or dust particles, or small small particles, or even smoke. So the idea here is you have to kind of think of what you need to have, what you need to accomplish, and then then you use the right tool uh, for the job. So with that said, um, if you're just going to do dust, really small particles, and they don't need to self collide, then absolutely, and you need a lot of them, then absolutely use uh, the classic particle system. Okay. Now, if you want to have uh, more realistic water or objects like um, like gumballs that you want to drop into a bucket and you want them to see each other, then you want them to self-collide, then you have to use n, n particles because it, the Maya classic particles won't work at all. So those are the main differences. And the nice thing about the n particle system is it also works with n cloth and so you can have them collide with each other it's it's you can there's unlimited possibilities except for the only limitation is going to be your GPU um, how fast it is and what kind of computer you're using okay how much RAM you have because it is RAM hungry when you do dynamic simulations like this uh, so how much RAM do you have on your um, your board and 
how how much GPU RAM you have on you know your your video card. So um, I have I happen to have a desktop with a pretty uh, heavy duty um, graphics card back in the day. I mean it's this this my computer's about four years old now, and I've got a NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti I believe with 11 gigs of RAM. Now on my new computer I've got um, the 2080 um, Ti, so that's even faster. It's probably twice as fast, maybe not quite that much. But um, now they're now they've got the 3090 RTX, which I really want. Um, but that's almost a two thousand dollar card, so I can't afford that. So um, I'm, you know, right now I'm working on what you see here. Is I'm working on a computer, a pretty high end computer, about four years ago though. Um, with a 1080 Ti um, and um, it does pretty good now if you're running our laptop you're going to probably be forced to stick with um, the classic particles okay we're gonna in fact we're gonna be using classic particles probably module 1 through 6 um, and of course those of you that want to go ahead and do the simulations with um, and you got the the power for it if you're using a desktop and you got a pretty decent system maybe 16 gigs of RAM and uh, maybe 8 gigs on your graphics card and everything's running okay you just have to test it yourself so the idea is that you do what you think you can get away with because they're both the same particle systems ex except that there's going to be a time we're going to have to use um, the end particles in a couple of the modules so I'm hoping that we can keep it pretty scaled down now those of you want to go crazy you sure can go above and beyond I always want you guys to go above and beyond uh, what I'm asking for so have fun with that uh, particle systems are fun and they're fun to play with and they're fun to learn so um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna see the differences so I, I told you about the nucleus so we know that so why aren't these uh, my classic particles uh, going down like um, the end particles okay so that's a good question let's go ahead and play the simulation and take a look at what else we have here so with the end particles we have the nucleus and so if we click on the nucleus on the end particles we're gonna see that we have gravity okay so we have a lot of um, attributes here let's go ahead and close all those and so one of the one of the attributes that come that comes with it automatically which is kinda nice but uh, you know again you know if I don't want the gravity if I want to create a solar system then I have to actually turn this off and you know that takes time or I can go to the end particle shape and go into let's see where uh, there it is so under dynamic properties I'd have to go into the end particle shape and I'd have to go ignore uh, solve or gravity ignore wind so okay there we go so now it should ignore it there we go so now they're gonna act exactly the, ex the same way okay so now you know the differences between the two so we're gonna start with our first module and we're gonna talk about how to control and how to create a classic Maya particle system alright we'll see you in the next video